Are you looking to increase your design skills and productivity? From sketching, surfacing, assemblies, and everything in between, our books have you covered. Purchase a paperback or PDF version in our store today. Good morning and welcome to the Design Visionaries YouTube channel. Today I have the privilege of making a friend hopefully a little happier. She's not feeling that well. So I created some flowers and there's some techniques that I use to do this that I think are really powerful. And there's the uh, feature group, creating the feature group. That's a very important skill to uh, make this happen. And there's also the patterning of the feature in such a way that you can give a change to each member. So without further ado, I'm going to go through the different steps. I'm going to show you the different steps that it took to make this model. My name is Steve Samuel, of course, from Design Visionaries. And as you can see, I have here a pot full of daisies. I'm going to take you through the different techniques that I use to make this pot of daisies. And uh, hopefully you will learn some awesome techniques and hopefully this will give a, put a little smile on your face. So I'm going to uh, make current feature here and go all the way back to the beginning. I made a little pot. Well, first of all, how did I make the pot? Um, that was easy. Uh, it's just a revolve and then a shell and then I did some blending. Um, I did an, um, some trimming and etc. and I made the inside of the pot. There's the inside of the pot and I made a little surface because I wanted the um, ground or the uh, soil in the pot to be wavy. So I made some curves here and I mirrored them over like so. And I put a uh, through curve mesh there. And um, then I made this big extrusion here and I trimmed it. Um, and I did a, um, get this out of the way. I did a, uh, I replace face and uh, finally I created a little point. Now I'm going to control W here and get rid of that uh, deep body. I don't need to see the sketches anymore. And as you can see, there's one little point there. And then with the point co construction, um, and that's a uh, curve. Interesting that the point has always been in the curve function. The, it's a curve. I did a point on face and I just selected the face and I clicked a bunch of times and I got a bunch of points. And let's do a control shift K. No, let's do um, a control W and let me show you all the points. There they are. Okay. Then I did a single flower. And in order to show you how to do the flower, I'm going to go back in time here. And I'm going to show you that <clears throat> I did a uh, datum axis that was um, through one of the points and parallel to the y axis. Just a simple datum axis. On that datum axis um, and on that point, I made a datum plane. And on that, I made a sketch. This sketch is special because it has these two dimensions. As you can see, it's, um, there's a, uh, approximately eight inches here and five inches here. And those dimensions are going to be varied as I pattern each flower. So cool. So I have then a tube. Get out of the sketcher first. And I have a tube. 
the current feature there. There's my tube. And I did a revolve with just a piece of that uh, sketch. That's a partial revolve. And then some edge blends. There they are, like that. And then I patterned that. And then I did another revolve and an edge blend and a unite. And now I have a daisy. At least it's my representation of a daisy. Then I scaled it right here, my current feature. Now the reason why I scaled it is because later on when I pattern this entity, I can assign different scale factors to each member of the uh, pattern feature. And that's really cool. And I, could, and I also assigned um, different values to that sketch, if you recall. There's an 8-inch uh, dimension here and a 5-inch dimension here. And these are going to be varied when I do the patterning. Okay? So then I also did a move face. And the move face is a synchronous modeling technique. And I selected all of the faces of the feature or of the flower because it's a group of features. And the reason why I did that is because I wanted to vary that angle. I didn't want all the flowers to point in the same angle. And so then um, I did a feature group. So now it's all one feature called flower. Imagine that. And now let's control W and uh, get rid of the points, data planes, data axes, the coordinate systems, the sketches. And now it looks quite nice. One single flower. Um, you know what? I'm going to bring back the points because I want to show you that when I did the pattern, I did a pattern general. And now here's the pattern. And um, yes, in order to really show you, I'm going to delete the pattern that I had so I can show you from scratch how this whole thing comes together. Okay. So, <clears throat> I just created one flower now. I've got the scale. I've got the move feature or the move face. And now I'm going to say home. And I'm going to say pattern feature. Now the pattern feature that I have to use has to be a variational. Because the variational pattern gives you access to all the parameters that are used to create the flower and control the flower. And so you select the feature. So I'm going to click the feature here. And now this is a crucial thing. There's a reference point that you must select and you must select it correctly. And the reference point is the original point that uh, was used to create this. And I'm going to go to the rendering style wireframe. And I'm going to hover over here until I get the three dots. And I'm going to click on there. And I've got to look for my menu is all the way over on my other screen. And I want to make sure that I select the original point, this one right here, point 43, as the pattern reference point. Okay. Then I have a lot of points, the from, the from point, I've got to select the from point, which is the same point. So I'm going to hover until I get the three dots and make sure that I select that same point again. And so now that I've selected the reference point and the from point, and they are the same, I can now select the two points. So I'm going to make a box around here. Hopefully select them all up just like that. So they're all selected. And there's a bunch of them. Cool. Now, this is the really interesting part. I want to uh, do an orient orientation of uh, same as input. No, follow, follow pattern. Follow pattern is good. But the real, where the rubber meets the road, is when you click on the 
uh, use uh, spreadsheet or the spreadsheet function. Now the spread spreadsheet function in NX is super powerful because as you can see, the spreadsheet function now gives a uh, location of every single point, every single point, and it also gives you the ability to now give a different numerical value for each and every one of the flower uh, features, feature groups. So as you can see, that eight inch value, the default value was 8.1, I want that to be varied, and I want it to vary from, let's say seven inches to 10 inches. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put equals, it's a formula, seven plus. Now, I want it to go from seven all the way to, uh, what did I say, nine. So I need to do two times R-A-N-D, left and right friend. And that gives me a value, uh, R-A-N-D, left and right friend gives me a value from zero to one a random value, so I'm multiplying it by two, I'm adding it to seven. So the max that this is gonna go is nine, and maybe give it another more, give it, give it a little more, three. So the max it's gonna do is 10, and the minimum it's gonna do is seven. And so now that I have that formula, I can click on this little box here and just sync it down to row 46, and as you can see, I've got 7.4, 9.4, 8.3, so this is a nice little distribution. Um, it would be very rare for me to get exactly seven or exactly 10. But as you can see, I've got a 9.8 here. I've got an eight here. I've got a 7.3, here's a 7.1. So this is nicely varying from about seven to about 10. That's cool. And now the other variable uh, was the offset, if you will, um, of the flower to the right and the left. And I want that to vary from a small value. It's starting off at five, but I think I'd like a bunch of flowers kind of in the middle. So I'm gonna say for this one, it's going to equal uh, one plus um, six times R-A-N-D, left and right print. So that's gonna give me a bunch of nice values. It's going to um, ha make a bouquet that um, flourishes nicely. I can see the smallest value is gonna be 1.4. There, something like that. Highest value is gonna be almost seven. Here's 6.1, 6.1. There should be something that's very close to seven in there, I guess. Here's six, six okay. Here's a 6.5. Okay, so that's gonna be good. Now, I want some of the flowers to be small and some of the flowers to be bigger. And so I've got to traverse over to the portion of this spreadsheet that controls the scale. And so since there's a lot of little, a lot of little dimensions, gotta be very careful here and read. Sketch, 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 cable, cable. Should be towards the end. And as you can see, here's the scale. And the scale starts off with a 0 0.9. And I'm gonna say that that equals, I'm gonna have quite a variation. I'm gonna say it equals 1.2 plus, let's see. Um, if I put 0.5 there, no, let's start it off smaller. Let's go 0.7 plus uh, 0.5 times R A N D. So 0.7 and 0.5 is 1.2. Um, let's make it 0 0.6. 0 0.6 times R-A-N-D, left and right print. So that gives us an initial value of 
zero, nine, and then I've got to go all the way down to uh, row 46. Um, in order to facilitate that, I'm just going to push this up here like that so I can use it as a ruler. And I'm going to click on this little thing, hold the little square there, and go all the way down to the bottom. Boom. And so now, as you can see, I've got some flowers that are 0 0.7, 0 0.9, 1.29. So they're going to be varied quite a bit to a level that's noticeable. Nice. And then there was the uh, orientation. Here's the angle of the flowers. And I want those to be all over the map. So I'm going to say equals, whoops, equals, and I'm going to start it off with some very low number, 0 0.001, because I don't know if it'll take a zero. And I'm going to add to that 360 times uh, R-E-N-D. Open my friend. There you go. And so the very first angle will be 13 degrees, and the rest of them, I should have them all over the map here. And as you can see, there's um, 43, 43 degrees, 180, 2. Do I have any that are close to zero? Not really. What's going on with this thing? Hmm. I don't like my formula. Let me just check it here. Okay, the formula was 0.01 plus 360 times R-A-N-D, but I'm not getting anything that's really close to zero. Well, here's six, here's six degrees. Here's 56 degrees. Here's three degrees. Okay, well, let's, let's go for it. Okay, so now I've varied the uh, height of the flower, the offset of the flower, the scale of the flower, the rotated angle of the flower, uh, and now I'm ready to go. So, now this is interesting. I click the little X here, and it always asks me if I want to save my results. I say OK. And now it is calculating all of those flowers. And that's nice. And now I say OK. So, I do this geometry for the same reason that I do a lot of my designs, um, and that is... In the end analysis, all of this technology is only as good as the people that it helps. And so hopefully my friend will get a kick out of these flowers and feel better sooner. Here they are. That's a good looking bouquet. I'm going to say Control W to get rid of the points or hide the points. And I think I'd like to say View. Style, True Shading Editor. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. Okay. Again, my name is Steve Samuel from Design Visionaries, and it is quite a privilege to do these kinds of things for uh, our growing user community. Please uh, like and subscribe, uh, tell a friend, and hopefully you will use your design skills to uh, make somebody happier. Thanks again, Steve Samuel.